Hey everyone, I'm Pimpilla, and today I'll be talking about uh, generating strings of text using context-free grammars. Um, but before I start, I wanted to show an example of what you can do with a context-free grammar. Uh, so here's a haiku generator uh, I made using Wu-Tang lyrics. Um, it says, this quick mystery paralyzing immensely outside white clovers. Um, so if you guys don't know, a haiku is a three-line poem where the first line is five syllables, uh, the second is seven syllables, and the, the last one is five syllables. Um, so I wrote the production rules using a context-free grammar, um, but the output is random each time. So we have no first tablets, paralyzing verbally over each Detroit. Um, behind those buckets, simple or vicious hitter, continue wholly. Some are better than others. It's <laughs> random. Um, yeah. So what is a context-free grammar? Um, it consists of four elements, a set of non-terminal symbols. Uh, here, these letters stand for a noun phrase, a verb phrase, a determiner, a noun, a verb, and an adverb. Um, and I'm using just uh, basic English sentence structure here because we're all familiar with it, um, but a grammar can really be anything that you uh, define it to be. Um, the second element that it needs is a start symbol, which is itself a non-terminal, um, and then a set of terminal symbols, uh, which are words, meows, cat, the loudly. Um, and the idea is that you have a set of production rules where the left-hand non-terminals are recursively replaced by the right-hand symbols until a terminal is reached. So I'll go over this more closely in the next slide, um, but here are your start symbols replaced by NP and VP, and then we find a rule for NP, and we see that that needs to be replaced by D and N, and D is the, and N is cat, and so forth until you get um, a phrase like the cat meows loudly. Um, so this kind of left-hand replacement uh, is known as leftmost derivation, uh, and you always expand with the leftmost non-terminal, as the name suggests. Uh, you begin with the start symbol, and at each step, you choose a rule from the grammar, and you repeat until no uh, non-terminals are left. So let's say we start again with S. Um, we find a rule that says S becomes NPVP, and then we find a rule for NP, and we continue to only focus on the left until a terminal is reached. So that D uh, becomes the, and then we can take care of the N, which is cat, um, and so on and so forth until we get the phrase. Um, so the derivation is finished when all of the elements are terminals. Um, we can also visualize the recursive replacement by looking at a parse tree. Uh, so here, S becomes NPVP, uh, and you take care of the leftmost recursively until the D becomes a the, A becomes quick, N becomes fox, and then the leftmost is VP, and then the leftmost here is a verb which is jumped, and then the prepositional phrase here consists of a P and an NP over, and then again we have another series of DAN, here the lazy dog. Um, and I also want to point that in theory this NP could have been replaced with something uh, like a, a noun and a prepositional phrase, and then that prepositional phrase would then be replaced by a preposition and another uh, noun phrase, and so on and so forth. And so that could happen recursively uh, over and over. So because of this, CFGs can uh, yield an infinite number of derivations. So what is the point of having um, a grammar? Uh, in addition to using one to produce sentences, it can also define what sentences are valid. So in a context-free grammar, language is defined as all the possible derivations under your production rules. And every possible derivation has at least one corresponding parse tree. So if you can't parse a string into a tree, it's not a valid sentence. Um, and CFGs, because uh, they allow you to define things recursively, are often uh, used as models to describe the syntax of programming languages. And you might recall from CS Saturday um, that parse trees and recursive descent are typically used within a compiler to describe the structure of an input language in terms of its syntactic rules. So if the parser is unable to parse the input into a tree, there is a syntactic error in your code. So CFGs can be serious stuff, but they can also be used to write poetry. Um, so to go back to the haiku generator I showed you earlier, I wanted to talk about a cool library I used called Rita. 
Um, it was created by a guy named Daniel Howe for writers and artists working with natural language. Um, and it has methods to analyze features of text, like part of speech and phonemes. Uh, and it also has methods that allow you to generate text using Markov chains um, and grammar-based models, which we're talking about today. Um, so to start making this haiku generator, I first had to create a dictionary of terminals of words, right? Uh, so I took a long string of lyrics and I split it into an array, which I then looped over to create uh, a nested object with one uh, level of keys being the number of syllables and the second level of key uh, being the part of speech. So I can show you, I have a console log here. So here's my terminals object. And if I open it up, all of these keys represent uh, the number of syllables. And if I open up three and then adjective, I have a list of all of uh, the adjectives that are three syllables in my dictionary. Okay. So to make that nested object, um, I had the help of two built-in Rita methods, uh, Rita.getSyllables and Rita.getPostTags. And then I had to write the grammar rules, um, which is really simple with Rita. To start, you simply call a new instance uh, of the Rye Grammar object, which Rita provides here on line nine. Um, and then you use the add rule method off of your instance to define your rules. Um, so add rule takes two arguments. The first is the symbol for your non-terminal, um, which is sort of like the left-hand side of the arrow that we saw earlier. And the second uh, argument are all uh, the possible uh, replacement values. And you can separate your multiple options with a pipe symbol, and Rita will randomly select one um, in the generation of your output. So you can see on line 12, a start can either be a haiku, basically. You can either be, can start with a prepositional phrase followed by a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase, or a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase, and then a prepositional phrase. And these are all tagged with their, uh, the number of syllables in that line. And then on line 15 is an example of a, another non-terminal rule where a five-syllable noun phrase can be uh, any of these options, which are basically just combinations of determiners, adjectives, and nouns of different syllables. Um, and then on line 18, you can see a rule for terminals, um, and you can see all the options we have for our three syllable adjectives. And then to expand the grammar, you simply call rg.expand, and that's the recursive rewriting algorithm. And that's it. Um, and you can check out Haiku at this link. And I will leave you with a poem. Yeah. Thank you.